Until hey everybody, welcome back to Egg and Baby in the Mornings. I know that sounds like the world's most cursed breakfast sandwich. It's not, it's just me. I'm the egg, she's the baby. Hello, baby. How you doing today? She she may get a little ornery. We'll see. GX9TJL2F. I feel like I've I've become the the ultimate uh, worker. Unions hate him. Find out one simple trick that a man used uh, to do his full time job while also having uh, his baby around him at all times. Hold on, how much HP did it? it was a joke? It was a joke. I'm just you know. You gotta recognize with a newborn, there's there's flashes of uptime and then there's flashes of downtime. You know, there's previously like so when we first had the baby is just like I don't even remember. <clears throat> Essentially, like the, the I I recognize the truth that there was a version of me in the hospital and I watched. This beautiful creature, you know, be delivered, and uh, then there were like two days where we stayed in the hospital. Um, but there's such a blur. I mean, you're getting—it's such a monumental life change. You're getting no sleep. Uh, every two to four hours, a nurse is coming in and being like, "Hey, are you doing okay?" And you're like, "I don't even know what time it is. Like, I, room doesn't even have like a window. Like, I, I'm I'm just like I feel like I'm in some kind of weird casino, right?" Um, it's just surreal. And then, like, the first few weeks after that, I have essentially no memory. Like, it, it's kind of mind-boggling to me that um, somehow I, I managed. And, and it, like, I, I don't mean this in, like, a, you know, I sacrificed a lot of time with my baby in order to get... No, it's like, um, you know, the first few weeks, I'm just... I, looking back, I'm like, I literally have no memory, uh, essentially, of, of how I was able to do some work while also simultaneously, uh, you know, we were dealing with the, this new addition to our lives. But now we're in like this, um, in a good routine, I think is a good way to describe it, where, you know, most mornings I get like two or three hours of baby time. But for a couple of weeks, honestly, and I'm not blaming you, baby, it's not, you know, you should, you should do whatever feels right in the moment. Um, but, you know, we wake up at like six, and then I feed her, and then I change her diaper, and depending on how bad the diaper was, I might change her outfit, and depending on how bad her outfit is, I might start some laundry. Um, but once that's done, she usually just goes to sleep, and I just kind of, you know, chill for two hours and occasionally look over at her and be like, you doing okay? And she's like, and I'm like, all right, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now, you know? I've been, been watching some TV, been reading, been playing some Slay the Spire, and I thought, you know what? My mornings start so slow, and then my afternoons and evenings, it really feels like there's way too much work to uh, cram into that time period. If only there was some sort of possible way that we could rebalance this. And and that's what's happening with these, you know, Isaac episodes with the baby. Of course, baby's number one priority if she's if she starts to caterwaul. Always try to put in a word of the day. If she starts to caterwaul, um, then we will, uh, you know, we'll put a little pause in the video. But apart from that... Seems like, honestly, I think it's like a mutually beneficial arrangement. She soaks up like some linguistic uh, diatribes that hopefully don't influence her too much because of the fact that if she talks like me, like, oh my god. Can you imagine my wife having to deal with like two me's in the house? I can't even comprehend. Um, but on the other hand, it is getting the job done. <laughs> Alright, so they, I'm not happy I took damage there. That's, that's a little weak and it's a little whack. We got no chance. We didn't get any money on the last floor, so we're not going to get an arcade here in all likelihood. You know what? I'm not scared. Um, I should have been scared. That was a pretty bad return on our investment there. And oftentimes we will get hit on a room like this, but I, I'm not feeling too bad about this. Like, um, you know, you can lose as Samson. It's definitely... Oh, okay. It's definitely happened before, but, um, you know, at least, like, we have a mechanism built into this run. To just win. I know that sounds like a, a forehead comment, like just win, but um, you know, you have uh, whatever Samson's uh, item is called. <laughs> I was like, why do I remember Samson's lock, but I don't remember what what the Samson's like most valuable item is called. You know what I'm talking about? It's not blood rights. It's not 
Hold on. You know, they, these are signs my uncle showed right before this something, something, something. Um, I will say, you know, I have... They, they say mom brain is a thing, um, but you should not tell the mom that. Mom brain is like, you know, during pregnancy and, and after the birth. Um, mom gets a little bit more forgetful, gets a little bit more scatterbrained. Uh, and I, I think that you can totally understand why for a couple of different reasons, if, if it's true to begin with. Um, but it sounds plausible um, because, you know, you're getting like no sleep and sleep is tied to memory. You're getting less sleep and, and inconsistent sleep and sleep's tied to memory. You're also filling your brain with much more important stuff than the names of Isaac items, you know? You're, you, you got, uh, hey, when you, constantly in your brain is a schedule running of, like, when did she last eat? When was her last diaper change? What was her last diaper change like? You know, how, how old is she in the macro sense? And, and so on and so forth. Constantly checking on stuff like that. And then also, like, there's hormonal changes. But I, I definitely feel like uh, I've been noticing a little dad brain in myself as well. Like, I, I, I've, my mental arithmetic is pretty strong. You know, I'm not, like, a, a savant in that sense. Like, I, I'm not going to be able to multiply, like, two four-digit numbers in my head in a second. But if you were like, oh, what's, you know, 70% of 50? You know, I could very easily tell you it's 35. Um, and I, I chose a deliberately easy one there, because I've noticed, this, and, and, you know, I don't do calculations in my head all that often, but... Especially like and, and it's not we're not pivoting into investing, but sometimes you know with investing You'll be like oh, the PE ratio for this stock is like You know eight which is amazing and or like amazingly low and then in the sector the the average PE ratio is like 14 And then the stock price is like $22. So if it uh, Regresses to the norm how much you know percentage wise can you be expected to, to get here at a fair value? And then you know I start to run the numbers in my head and I'm like I, I I've started to become like that guy who's like, nah, let's not do it in my head, let's just pull out a calculator. I've replaced the mathematics part of my brain with, with just like a routine that's like seek calculator. You know when you're at uh, like the self-checkout at the grocery store? Sorry, she, she's looking at me, I gotta... You, you return a smile with a smile and you go, baby. And then she smiles. She's having a great day, yeah. You know when you're at the self-checkout of the grocery store and you like try to scan something and it goes error, scan again, and then you scan it again, um, and it, it puts on like a big flashing red siren and says, don't worry, help's on the way? That's, that's kind of what my brain has done. Instead of trying, oh, well, good game. Uh, instead of trying to do the uh, mathematics itself, it just sounds the alarm and then it goes like, don't worry, just, just open up your, your phone. It'll be so much simpler that way. If, wouldn't it be nice if you just opened up your phone right now? So I apologize, sorry, there's two metal straws clanking together. I apologize for making it seem like this run is, is set, um, but it, it pretty much is. <laughs> and then beyond all that, like, I've also had uh, a few runs lately, not, not the majority necessarily, but definitely a few runs lately that have been um, really on the tough side and, and in particular haven't really improved on damage at all. Uh, over the course of the entire run, so I will be taking like every available advantage here and not feeling bad about it Hello, baby Hello She's she's mad right now, um, and, and I can fix this problem for her. she's mad because she's trying to eat her hand Yeah, I know I mean, Let me let me help you out here You're good. You're good. I fixed it. She wants to eat her hand. Um, which is really annoying, by the way. It's, like, I'm not going to say, like, she's annoying with it. But, like, so I, I gave her a bath last night. And it was my first, like, the first bath where I was driving the bus. And I, I'll admit, there's a little bit of, like, husband bravado. Where I've watched my wife, my wife give the baby a bath before. Um... And, uh, you know, you, you watch it and you just kind of take it for granted. You go like, yeah, I get it, you know? You, you put 
You, you put her in the bath safely because you got like a little bath chair that she sits in. Um, you don't just want her slide around the tub, obviously. And then, uh, you know, you you use this like pitcher to wet her and then you put soap on her and then you use the pitcher to rinse the soap off. Um, but you, when I was driving the bus myself, I was like, this is not as easy. And, you know, of course, your initial hunch is that the baby is trying to, you know, make your job harder. But I think really it's just an indication that my wife has, uh, she's got some extra skill in it. But, um, uh-oh, baby. She, she loves to eat her hand, which is not a huge problem most of the time. But in the bath is a huge problem because I would say like the hands are one of the top five things you're going to want to wa uh, wash in the bathtub. Especially because, you know, she's not washing her hands too much throughout the rest of the day. So I would like put soap on her hands and then, you know, she would immediately try to snap that hand into her mouth. And it's, it's non-toxic soap, but still I, I want to avoid the chain reaction where like she eats the soap and then she's like, what the heck, this doesn't taste right. And then she starts to cry and I still got to wash like, you know... 80% of the surface area of her body and like is Yeah, it's it's a it's a task right baby Oh, but um, her her hand was in a sleeve She couldn't she couldn't eat it and she was going like what the heck There used to be a hand here and now there's just like some cotton fabric So I, I got her hand out of her sleeve, but the whole time I'm trying to get the hand out of her sleeve She's trying to hold on to the sleeve because she's only recently learned how to grasp things. And the, basically, she's trolling me. And you know what? I support it. Troll baby. Come come in to repentance March 31st, 2021. Do not speak the old words to me. I was there when they were written. I, that's my way of saying I'm, I will not be tempted <laughs> by Shoop Tuu. We do need damage desperately. But we won't need as much damage if we stick with Satanic Bible, which is just a, an incredible item. But certainly, yes, we're we're hoping to pick up some kind of some kind of damage improvement in the future. God, that's like my one, and I know I keep harping on this. If they could like add thirty percent expected damage yield to any given Isaac run, this game would would reascend into 11 out of 10 levels. Is my personal take on things. How many runs can we have that have no damage? You know, it's it's getting a little absurd. I think. At least we have HP here. Like, I even if you gotta replace an item in the game that generates hearts with an item that generates some damage, I would be that would be over the moon. I would be over the moon, baby. Now, do we take this? We, sh we probably shouldn't, so let's do it. There's actually like a huge improvement for us. I, I didn't want to make it seem like it's like that uh, risky. Because, uh, you know, if anything, I think you, you have pretty much like an equal chance to gain or lose. But you, at least with the relevant stats. But you also got to remember that having an equal chance is is actually really bad. Because, you know, you're spending, for lack of a better word, an item pedestal in order to get an equal chance to break even. Like, that's just... You know, not really the strongest thing. Like, if you were on Let's Make a Deal and you opened door number three, and then, you know, Wayne Brady told you that you're going to get a free Uber back to your hotel, you probably wouldn't be that stoked. Hold on, I think we should we should pause for baby duty. See you in a moment here. All right, we're back. Mommy came to the rescue. Um, yeah, I think we finished our, our hand story, right? You, you gotta be very creative with the baby stories, cause look, I'll be the first person to acknowledge I uh, I was uh, childless a lot longer than I have had a child. People would tell me stories about their kid, and I'd be like, "That's cool," but to be honest with you, I just really don't care. <laughs> I, I, if you and if you're like, "That's insensitive," no, like if I mean, if you said that to me, like if you were a friend of mine, I'd be like, "That makes perfect sense." If you're like, uh, you know, if you're just watching, I'd be like, okay, I don't know who you are, just stop watching. You know, like, I know that sounds uh, ungrateful, but, you know, you, you build up a level of rapport with friends. You know, let me put it this way, nobody in the comments has ever helped me move. You know, if, if my friend with the truck says, uh, you know, that's cool, I'm not really into all that baby stuff, though, I would be like, you know what? Julian, fair play. I, I, sorry, I just picked a name. You might have thought I was thinking about Trailer Park Boys. I was actually thinking about um, the the villain from the movie The Mask, but that's okay. 
Now, that being said, I wouldn't want chat to help me move either or the comments to help me move either. But, you know, and, and honestly, you should take that as a big positive, in my opinion. That's one of the great things about not owning a truck is that people don't really ask you to help them move. I really... Dude, I hate moving. I, I have done it. I'm trying to think. I didn't move for like the first seven years of my life. And then, you know, I moved two times between like second grade and 12th grade. It's like once every five years on average. But when you're a kid, like moving isn't really... I don't want to say it's not that bad. Because I think like if you move schools, it's it can be kind of traumatic. Like that was always like the... When you're a kid and like in a movie or something like that... Your best friend is moving away and you they always like look back out of the rear view window of the station wagon when they're driving away. That's like the most traumatic thing that can like happen to a to a kid in a movie, right? Of a certain age. Um, but you know, logistically your your family handles the moving of the boxes and the you know, all the stressful stuff like, you know, closing on the property and the you know, blah blah blah. Even as an adult, I hate moving though. Oh my god. I don't think anybody likes it, but, like, I spend the whole time, you know, because we moved, like, a year and a bit ago. I spent the whole moving process in the bargaining phase of, uh, grief. Like, I, I was, I guess I spent a little time in denial, and, and everybody does when they move. This won't be so bad. And right after that, I was just in bargaining the whole time. Maybe I'll just leave half of my stuff here, and then, like, new tenants can uh, throw it all out for me. You know, I, I turn into a real a-hole. Now, eventually, we just moved all this stuff out. You know, I wouldn't actually do that. It's kind of like, you know, you're breaking the, the social contract at that point. But that's you, you kind of tell yourself those, those sorts of lies to get through the day sometimes, right? I've talked about it before, but, like, you know, sometimes I'll have, like, a, a bad sleep. So maybe I'll look over at the clock and it's like 2.30 a.m. And I, I haven't really gotten any sleep yet. And I know I got to... Probably the baby's going to get me up at like 6. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be a rough day tomorrow. And then I go, you know what? Nothing to worry about. I'll just cancel the stream. And then when I wake up, I'm tired. But I don't cancel the stream. Because I'm like, you know... It's just a lie that I told myself in order to make it easier to get back to sleep. And in order to feel better about it. I think, you know, the meat and potatoes of this is, like, oftentimes, not not always, let's be clear, but oftentimes, the, you know, the pain of something is, is larger in your head than it is in reality. Like, you know, when you're, when you're sitting in bed at, at 3 a.m., you haven't really slept, and you think about the fact that you're going to have to go to... Almost just skipped the deal with the devil, which, to be honest, wouldn't have been that catastrophic. But the uh, not knowing what it was would have been so catastrophic. Because if you don't know what it was, it could have been the best item in the game. But, you know, th when you're sitting there, th laying in bed, 3 a.m., you got to go to work tomorrow. And you're like, oh, this freaking sucks, man. Like, I'm going to be so out of it tomorrow, so sore. I'm going to feel so sluggish. You know, that's like, that's really bad. Then when you're actually doing the work, you're not feeling 10 out of 10, but you're like, you know what? It, it's not that bad. I can I can last it out for a day. And then, you know, every hour that goes by, it becomes a little bit easier to, to finish it. And then eventually, I, I was going to say before you know it, but let's be honest, you, you know it's coming. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock and you're, you're on your way home. So this is the, the, the lies I tell myself there as well, you know? If I have a bad sleep, I'm like, I'll just do less work tomorrow. And then, honestly, tomorrow rolls around and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get... And, and again, I understand, like, I, I'm i taking somewhat of an unpopular position here. Especially in, you know, current times. You should have self-care. You know, you should recognize when you're, uh, you know, feeling burnt out and stuff like that. And if you have the opportunity, I think you should definitely, um, you know, take time that actually is, like, restorative to yourself. But I, sometimes I feel like there's there's kind of a cycle you can get into... And it really only applies to, like, YouTubing, I think, and, and streaming. But, like, you know, it, it, let's call it, like, the, the stress-anxiety curve. Um, you know, if you, you don't have a great night, so you, you, you take the next day off. And then as a result, you know, you see, and it's a necessary thing, but you see a dip in the numbers. You see a dip in the numbers, and you're like, oh, I have to work 
you know, that much harder to, you know, make up for that dip in the numbers, even if taking today off was a good idea or, or there was no avoiding it. And then, you know, you get a little bit more stressed out, you put more pressure on yourself, and then, you know, maybe that causes you eight days from now to have to do the exact same process again because you didn't sleep well the night before. You can kind of get sucked into, like, a little bit of a whirlpool, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Usually, I would rather take a, a little discomfort hit in order to, and, and we call that discomfort hit, drinking four cups of coffee between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. On, on days where you don't sleep well. Um, I would rather take a little bit of a discomfort hit and, and try to avoid or mitigate the effects of the cycle as much as possible. Because there's already, you know, some stress involved with the job. But I also recognize, like, a lot of... People, in fact, the vast majority of people just don't have the luxury, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this weird spot where, like, I, and I, you know, this is, to some extent, this is, I don't know, it's not really braggadocious, but maybe it's counter-programming to, like, the what the, you know, consensus on, like, the internet is, but um, I'm, I'm caught between, like, a rock and a hard place where, like, people simultaneously think, like, I work too hard because I... Um, you know, don't take many days off unless they're, like, pre-planned stuff with, like, baby medical issues. Not that the baby has medical issues, you know, and just the routine doctor's appointments, which, like, literally are <laughs> the routine for the first few years of the baby's life, right? Like, I have routine doctor's appointments. They're, like, once every two years, and they go, are you feeling okay? And I go, I think so. My knees kind of hurt, and they go, yeah, you're getting older, get over it, come back, see you in 2022. But the baby has routine doctor's appointments that are like, we need to see, you know, this creature once every two months. Give her, you know, six jabs in her arm, and then send you on your merry way. Um, so I'm, I'm caught between, like, the, the perspective that, like, oh, you're overworking yourself, and then also, on the flip side, the people who are like, you couldn't pot even if you work 24 hours a day, I would still think that your life was too easy because of the fact that you're not, you know, hauling garbage bags nonstop, right? So, I recognize that this is probably hitting for absolutely nobody, but I'm just saying. Most people, when they have a, a, a night where they're very tired, they can't even tell themselves that lie of, uh, hey, I'm going to take tomorrow off of work. I guess you just deal with the acceptance of like, hey, tomorrow's going to suck, but we're only two days from Friday. can understand that. Had, had several of those days when I was teaching, without a doubt. Especially when you're on, like, so the, the the split schedule that I was on as a teacher, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'd have the same classes, and then Tuesday, Thursday, you'd have the same classes. Um, and it's just, you might say, like, how do they ever balance out? Well, it's like they don't. It's just basically because it was, like, a an after-school academy. Um, I don't know why. You, you may not be concerned with the logistics, but because it's an after-school academy, basically, you can send your kid to Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes where they'd get, you know... 50% more instruction, or you could send them to Tuesday-Thursday classes, where they would, you know, get the base level amount of instruction, I suppose. Anyway, um, yeah, they had a, especially, oh my god, if you had, like, a, a bad, like, you had a, because Monday, Wednesday, Friday were usually busier, you'd have, like, a, in a lot of younger classes, where, you know, you spend l way less time teaching and way more time just trying to maintain, like, order in the classroom. Oh, man, you're like, oh, Monday just finished, I still have t a Wednesday, end of Friday, and then, like, you don't sleep well the night before, and you're like, ah, you know. This, ep this episode is dedicated to all the teachers out there. Big ups to all the teachers out there. Keep it up. Wonder, wonder if I would prefer or, uh, what's the opposite of prefer? Duffer? <laughs> Wonder if I would prefer or detest Zoom classes. I think there's a lot of positives. For one, let's start there. Um, you know, like you, no kids are gonna be like physically wailing on each other, which is good. But I imagine like it's already hard to get a kid's attention. I can't even imagine what uh you know the the extra difficulty in trying to get a kid's attention when they're actually on the most distracting device that mankind has ever invented and people and, and like i recognize that maybe this is not going to be a popular statement either apparently it's one of those episodes 
But people, like, they, they beg the question. Like, they appeal almost to absurdity, in my opinion, if we're going to talk about fallacies. Well, if the teacher was good, um, then they could just get the attention of 30 kids with wildly different attitudes and, uh, you know, completely different priorities in life and completely different home situations. So if, if they were merely a good teacher, um, they, they could just, you know, keep the rapt attention of, of 30... Uh, 30 teenagers without uh, ever losing it. No, it's just nonsensical. Even like the most compelling pieces of media ever invented, you know, 20% of the population minimum is checking their phone halfway through to be like, ooh, <laughs> a text. What are you doing? Sorry, can't wait to respond to this one, Christopher Nolan. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to be... Uh, like, that, that element of being a teacher is hard. Everybody thinks, like, if they were a teacher, they'd be like, oh, Mr. Holland's opus or, like, Randy Posh's last lecture and stuff. Like, you honest, like I, it's just not conceivable to maintain. Like, not every lesson can be, uh, you know, the, a, a magnum opus, basically, right? You know, like, most days are just like, hey, the Byzantine era, doop, 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 have it on my desk by Thursday, see you next time, right? So I feel, I feel like being in, like, working from home, honestly, I imagine a lot of people are, are, you know, given the circumstances, admittedly, I imagine a lot of people are like, hey, there's some positives here. Like, I was watching some uh, business news this morning because I'm 500 years old, and, like, the general sentiment from people when they were talking about the travel industry is that, like, business travel may never recover to the level that it was at before. And I, all I'm going to say, I'm not going to say I predicted this because, you know, I definitely did not predict that there would be like a, you know, global pandemic kickstarting this. But so many times over the years, if you've been watching for a long time, you've heard my attitude evolve here and you've heard me say, I would love to preview more video games, but I just don't understand why so many companies, instead of just being like, hey, here's the code for the game or like, here's a limited time beta or something like that. And there's DRM that you can use. I know people don't like DRM and I don't like it either. But there's DRM you can use to make sure that like, you know, you, the YouTubers are not going to distribute the beta build. And if they do, then you just, you know, send them back to the prehistoric age in, in court. Um, Hold on, I'm just trying to figure out if I need to dodge or if I can focus on the banter. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and instead, they're like, you know, you'll get an email, and, and this is, again, first world problems for sure, but you get an email that's like, hey, want to preview, you know, cool new game under NDA that you would love to play? And you're like, yeah, absolutely. And they're like, all right, well, we're going to fly you out to Lansing, Michigan. And you're like, nah, man, I got, like, stuff here. It's nothing against Lansing, you know, even if they were like, we're going to fly you out to, you know, a, a world tourism destination or something like that. And, and oftentimes, you know, that is the case. I've been like, nah, I'm just and like it, it's it's not because like Vancouver is necessarily better than, you know, Barcelona or whatever. It's just that, you know, I already have a home in Vancouver and, you know. My, now, especially, you know, my family's here, my, my wife and my baby and my cats are here. Sorry, honey, I'm gonna take like three days off from, you know, domestic life to go, uh, you know, preview a game that is gonna come out and then, you know, people will be interested in it for like 10 hours and then they're gonna go back to playing League of Legends, right? Like, it's just... And the and then the other thing is I was like, I don't understand why, like, companies with such a limited marketing budget would... You know, and it's because, honestly, like, it's a vestige of an earlier time to some extent. Like, when there were magazines and stuff and the internet connections were not all that. So they got these, like, inflated marketing budgets. And they're like, yeah, we can spend, like, I don't know, $100,000 flying a bunch of, like, YouTubers and streamers and journalists out here. And put them up in hotels and feed them and et cetera, et cetera. And then, to some extent, they get to control the, you know, the environment. So, you know... That, you know, you're not, you're not playing it at home on, like, a, you know, maybe a Lenovo ThinkPad or something like that and being like, why does it run at 2 FPS, you know? And, you know, and, and long story short, I, but for a long time I've been an advocate of, like, why don't they just, like, send you the code? Makes, it seems like it makes way more financial sense. And then you can spend that money sponsoring streamers <laughs> instead. <laughs> ah, there it is. Um... No, but, like, I, I totally get it. Like, uh... 
You know, it, it seems like I, I really don't understand. I mean, I, I like Josh travels for work or again, pre-COVID, obviously traveled for work all the time. And I was always like, you know, there's like an escalation that I see in the corporate world. And, and I'm not an expert on the corporate world at all. Uh, you know, so I mean, in many ways, doesn't that make my opinion more valid? Because I haven't been, uh, you know, brainwashed by the system. Probably not. But. Let's not worry about that. Let's just pretend I'm an expert like I normally do. Uh, and then not worry about the consequences. But I, anytime, like, he flew, I was always like, you know, when you're, uh, like, a, you know, a, let's call it an entry-level employee, you end up in all these meetings where, honestly, anytime I was at one of them, with very rare exceptions, I was like, this could have been an email. The classic refrain, this meeting could have been an email. I always thought, like, uh, and I would tell the same thing to Josh. I would be like, couldn't you're, you know, you're, you're flying to, like, you know, Minneapolis today to, you know, I don't know, do, like, a sales pitch or something like that? Couldn't you just call them on Zoom? I don't understand. But I think finally some corporations are like, wait a minute. It's not worth $2,500 to do an in-person sales pitch if we could just, you know, call them on Zoom. Maybe, maybe not. Again, I don't work in that field. But I saw an ad the other day. Well, it was yesterday. I was watching the Canucks game. Let's not talk about the fact they lost seven to three. Um, but it was it was for a, a car dealership, and they sell luxury cars. And it's all online now. You can buy. You can go to the website. They'll put you in touch with the sales associate. Um, the sales associate will walk you through there, I mean, in the dealership, I think, so they can, like, walk around and, like, show you stuff and answer your questions. Uh, and then, you know, you can do basically, like, two-click ordering or something like that. I don't really know what that means. But, um, you, you could buy, like, a $150,000 car online. I feel like if, if people have gotten comfortable with that, because previously, if you'd been like, oh, what's one thing you would always want to buy in person? I would think a house as well, but a car would be up there. And then for houses, like, I've, I've been losing my mind. You know, Justin just went through, like, the process of buying a house. And, you know, I, I think he did an in-person tour, which I, I've... Look, honestly, I don't think is irresponsible. <laughs> Almost any in-person stuff that can be done virtually, I think, is kind of irresponsible uh, in, in this era of, you know, pre-vaccine COVID. But... Well, you know, I don't know. I don't have the vaccine yet, so apparently in my head nobody does. But um, either way, uh, I would, you know, if you're like, I'd rather, you know, go pick up my groceries than have them delivered. And I'm like, you know, it's not like a crime, but it kind of seems like a slightly unnecessary risk. I feel like when you're buying a house, that's one of the times where you're like, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll don my mask, I'll go to the... I'll go to the actual location, so I... Because, you know, you're not going to get a mildew smell coming out over over Zoom, you know what I mean? But he was like, people will just, like, literally not even look at the house. They'll, they'll just go to Zillow and then, like, put an offer in that's $30,000 above the asking price for the house. And then just buy it. Like, without even have. How are you supposed to compete with some... Like, I know this sounds um, kind of backwards... But how are you supposed to compete with a home buyer who's not afraid to take on too much risk? You know what I mean? If somebody is willing to pay $50,000 over asking uh, and also not go through the house and also, like, waive their right to a home inspection and stuff like that, like, I mean, you, you can't compete with somebody that irresponsible, right? <laughs> because it's like an auction. It's like if you go to an auction, you might be like, oh, that painting is worth a million dollars. And then if it, all of a sudden, if people start bidding it up to like 1.5, you're like, man, I really wanted that painting, but you know, I don't really want to lose that much money today. So anyway, so I, I feel like, you know, teleconferencing for sure is here to stay. I don't know, I don't know how I got onto this subject really, so to speak, but... Oh, we were talking about teaching. Yeah, I don't know. I feel, I feel like I would prefer to teach in person than on Zoom. But like when I when I worked uh, menial office jobs that were essentially just you know shuffling papers and plugging stuff into spreadsheets, definitely I think I would have at, at age 21 I would have been like oh man working from home is sick. I think that's the way you know we're moving a little bit. 
The, and I don't know if this will ever happen, and I don't think it can happen for like every job and every industry. But I feel like the next thing after working from home is choosing your own hours. I, and I don't know, it might take, you know, 50 years for it to ever become a thing. Obviously, if you work in a customer service facing role, like... Well, not even like making your own hours, let me put it this way. I, th I think the world is moving. This is my bold take for, for the future of, of industry and service, okay? I think that the, the world is moving into a, a paradigm where we're going to need people at businesses to be able to answer their phones after 5 p.m. I don't understand. Like, there, there's like a, the, the boomer paradox. If everybody's working from 9 to 5, how am I supposed to phone a business without taking time away from my work in order to do... Like, I always think about, um, like, the, the dentist, for example, is a good example. If the dentist's office is open from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, and, and ours isn't, it's open until Saturday, but um, how the heck am I supposed to get dental work done? I really have to use, like, and I'm putting myself in the mindset of somebody who's on, like, a more typical schedule, obviously, but I'm really supposed to use, like, like half a day off or something like that in order to get my teeth cleaned? Like, I feel like you could be, and maybe you don't want to do this, maybe there's, like, some work-life balance involved, but I feel like if you wanted to get a competitive advantage as a dentist, what if you just worked Friday from... Let's say noon until 8, Saturday from 8 until 8, and Sunday from 8 until 8. You know, that's like a... It's like a 32-hour work week, and it's stacked up in three days. I don't think you would have a, gr a great time in those three days, but I think you would pick up a lot of people who normally don't go to the dentist because they consider themselves, rightly or wrongly, to be too busy. And then... You got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You got like a four-day weekend every week where you're just kind of chilling out. I don't know. Maybe if you're a dentist, maybe people are like they're willing to bend their schedule for you. But so many times I'm like, you know, like a business will be like we're, we're only open between we're only open at business hours. And I'm like, wow, what a coincidence because I'm like only closed during business hours. Because we've all agreed upon the similar business hours. I can't seem to get in touch with you. So you'll see me because of your mother a thief. Read the words on the ATM slip. Said the all oh, mother and the, with my, come on. You know what I mean, Tomo? I know you want out of here, buddy. Like, but we're like, we're, we're two seconds away from finishing the run. I'll, I'll let you out. I'll, I'll grab a quick 10.28 a.m. lunch for myself and then we'll, we'll be good to go. You know, no, nothing to worry about, my man. Anyway, I don't know where I went on this episode. I, I, I took on Corporate America. I put the system on trial. For now, though, that's going to be... I mean, this is like the easiest run we've had in a, in a while. I think it was pretty much written in, in stone as soon as we uh, got Satanic Bible. But um, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And I am live every day except Saturday during business hours. 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Twitch.tv slash Northern Line. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!